Now, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have come in for a bit of criticism, but also a lot of praise uh, after giving a Zoom interview where they talked about what they call structural racism in the UK. Uh, Prince Harry said that he'd had an awakening to the discrimination faced by black people after meeting his wife, Meghan. So the comments come at the start of Black History Month. Uh, I mean, Judy, obviously really keen to get your thoughts on what that means to you, but can I just speak to you first, Nadia, about this yes. term that Harry uses about an awakening. Do you relate to that? I do, actually. I do. I think, you know, the, for me, the whole Black Lives Matter movement was about, um, about looking into ourselves and where we may have racist thoughts or things without even really knowing it. And I mean, just the language around white privilege, it just used to be something, it was just noise, really. I never really thought about what that meant. So I can I can identify with what he's saying. Yeah, I, I feel like in lots of areas, I was incredibly ignorant. I had no idea what was going on in America with the police. Now I think I'm almost over-informed on that because it's so horrific. Uh, I can't even imagine what it must be like to actually be, you know, in America... Um, living with that kind of fear um, on a daily basis. But, yeah, certainly. What, what, what does Black History Month mean to you, Judy? Do you know what? Even here, sitting here with you guys and, and you know, speaking about it, I, I just get this really nervous feeling sometimes because, obviously, black history is important and, you know, it's about... Well, I hope it's about celebrating um, black lives, black legacy, but... One of my things, if I'm honest, if I speak from my heart, which you guys let me do all the time, is that my, the nervousness comes from Black History Month just only being about um, the negative things, the negative impact. Anything on TV regards to uh, black lives is always black trauma. And I, I noticed, I found in myself, you know, when you look at Black History Months, it's always either slavery films or there's documentaries on, you know, black people that's been murdered. You know, it talks about uh, statistics and stabbings and single mums and all the rest of it. And what people need to understand, within the black community, people are going through this daily. And I realised something about two years ago, I watched something on one of the channels and it was a slavery film and it knocked me for about three weeks. Like, three weeks, I felt like, you know, I was quite emotional, I felt drained, I wasn't sure what was going on, and I realised what it is is secondary trauma. It's black trauma, but secondary trauma. And, you know, black trauma comes from... It's kind of like entertainment for a lot of people, but people need to understand it's actually secondary trauma. To think about it makes me emotional. Mm. It's secondary trauma because... You know, something simple like, you know, there might be a, a, a young black mum picking a school in an area, but because of everything she sees, she's more going to be thinking about, is it safe for him to travel here? How can he go there? Will he be um, restricted because he's a young black boy from South London? And it's constant. These videos that are coming out, yes, people mm. need to see what's going on, but I need people to understand that a lot of people in the black community have been seeing this time and time. Mm. Every time I see the murder of a young black man, I always will think that could have been my uncle, that could have been my brother, that could have been my cousin. See, that's it's what's constant. So interesting. Like Nadia, my reaction is probably similar to Nadia's. As a white person, I I absolutely think I need to know this stuff. I, I need to know the horrors. I absolutely have to acknowledge them, confront them, mm -hmm. and recognise them. But the other side of for you doing that. It's, it's a constant. completely different experience. Yeah. It's the first time yeah, I've ever heard anyone speak about it the way that you... Because for you, it's real. For me, it's an edu... It's real for me too. I'm not trying to say it's yeah, not, but it's... it's your history. It's just... It's hard, and I, I think, you know, there's so much beautiful things about the black community, um, my cultural background, being Jamaican, being a black British woman in the UK. Um, there's so much other things that needs to be celebrated. Yes, people need to be educated about what's going on, because this stuff is going on. It's not a lie. It's not like, oh, get over it. We're tired of it, and it's emotional, and it adds to our mental health. You know, you hear statistics. The highest statistics are, is, is black women, black men. It's a constant... Um, secondary trauma and trauma of it. And I, I want this Black History Month, especially what we've gone through, to be a celebration. Furthermore, I don't want it to be just a month because yeah. I'm not black just this month. I'm yeah. black all the time. You lot know that. <laughs> when I'm trying to bring a joke <laughs> in and all the rest of it, you lot know that. So it's like, 
Let's use the month to celebrate. Let's talk about the young writers that are out there. Let's talk about the young actors, the producers, the people that don't get the opportunities because, unfortunately, sometimes it is racism. And let, let's not make it a token gesture. It is funny, isn't Let it, it be something that is more of a long-term the factor. way you describe it, it's almost like Black History Month on s certain platforms isn't for black people. It's almost directed at everybody else to inform them and educate. Yeah. And then nobody's actually thinking about the black the people with that, that secondary has. trauma yeah. then the impact that's going to cause. And when you were speaking about secondary trauma, I imagine... I've, I've spoken here before about my grandparents and their parents mm. um, being refugees and, and Jews at a time when it was really difficult to be Jewish. Yeah. And my nana used to just... Everything you said, she'd go, go outside, <gasps> you're going to catch a cold, <gasps> you're going to... You know, she was always on edge and always panicked. And we just thought, oh, it's nana, mm. like, that's just the way she is. And you realise it's, it's so centuries good. of... Yeah. Passing down that fear of something bad's going to happen to exactly. us, and that trauma doesn't go away, and it does pass down the generation. So I, I, it is frustrating sometimes to but know. How that do you now. change that for your children, Judy? You, you know, before I even say that, if I just give an example like the Windrush situation, where people were sent back, the Windrush scandal, people were sent back. The trauma of that, you've got to understand. There was children; those people that came over left some of their children back home. Attachments were broken. These children were then brought over and then had to try and integrate into a family that had been here for 10 years. Mothers had left their kids for 10, 20 years, then brought them over. They felt segregated within their own home and then from the society. And this is something that we're carrying 20, 30, 40 years. And like you said, how do we change it? No, my mum was a part of Winmore's generation. For me, I've learnt to... I, you know, I did my master's in social work and I, I will be honest and say, I will go to therapy, I will have counselling and it's about us having that conversation but also really highlighting the positive. I make my children understand that no matter what society says and statistics say about you, that is not your portion. There's other things out there for you. So, yes, mummy is going to work today on loose women. Yes, mummy has got her master's. Yes, mummy is a single parent, but that's not my only label. In fact, I'm not even going to accept that label. I'm Judy Love, this is me, I'm your mum, and that's how it is. And I think those are the things that has to be celebrated, that we celebrate on loose women and on ITV. Mm. Don't make Thank me God. buy that, because <laughs> my makeup is so good! <laughs> it's an emotional one. I've, honestly, I'm shaking. Oh, I, feel I know, my, but it's funny. Stomach. There's three of us sitting in the studio, and Nadia's at home in our kitchen, and the te you know, it was so. Oh, it's it's just, a, yeah. It should well, be a celebration, yeah. though. You're right. Yeah. We should yeah. spend the month trying to find all of those extraordinary stories yeah. and and happy, positive. Well, we are going to keep going talking yes. about Black yes. History Month um, as, as the weeks go, and hopefully you uh, will help guide that. Yeah, and we'll talk about it a lot. You lot have been talking yeah. about before. Black History Month, and we'll continue the conversation yep. after Black History Month. Always. Yeah. Thank you. If you've been affected by anything we've just been talking about, then Thank please you. head over to our website where helplines are available.